Good morning, everyone. By thanking the pollinators, Mrs. Luciana Saboyan and Mrs. Carolina Pescatori, I have to say that it's a pleasure to be part of this group and share with all our work about Brazilian capital cities. We started developing the School of Architecture and Urbanism in the University of Brasilia. This research makes part of two projects. A personal one, Atlas of New Cities, a site that brings more than 300 new cities designed in Brazil in the last century. And the other, a collective project called Chronology of Urban Thought, an important search site on urbanism in Brazil and worldwide. To start our presentation, I showed this map of, this map of Brazil and its 27 federative units, 26 states and one federal district. Of course, for each state, one capital city. As we can see in Sao Paulo state, where we have an interesting history. In 1979, the then governor, Paulo Maluf, intends to remove the capital from Sao Paulo city to the interior of the state. He pretends with this movement, they congested the metropolis with 12 million inhabitants at that time and takes development, industry, university to stagnate regions. On this official publishment, we can see some main goals of his propose. According to sociologists who have studied the relocation issue, the process of interregional communication would be reorganized with the establishment of the new, new capital in the state interior, thus obtain a new chain of economic and cultural vigor, incrementing the development of new regions for the benefit of the nation. At the same time, the public administration will benefit once concentrate in a city with features specially designed for this purpose. The new capital's plan contemplates an administrative center, a university, and high schools in sufficient numbers to attend its inhabitants. No pollution industries, residential neighborhoods for all social strata, commercial and banking sectors, all aimed by extensive green areas. The new capital will be, in a short, a model of Harmony City, a dream by urban planners. Many studies, as we can see here, were produced to focus on planning the territory, rethinking other ways to urbanize it, in addition to the continuous growth of Sao Paulo metropolis. In fact, the proposal didn't succeed because the capital transfer were rejected in the state legislature by just only one vote. The idea to remove the capital was shelved. Yet the attempt had consequence. In 1980, the award architect Paulo Mendes da Rocha published a plan for a city to be located in the banks of the Tietê River between the municipalities of Novo Horizonte and Lins. His proposal was clearly thought out along lines similar to the program proposed by the state, including a university, a port, an industrial area, and the mall with the main buildings of the new city. Beside its own significance, the toward replacement of the state of Sao Paulo capital is recalled here as one of more instances of Brazilian tradition of planning new settlements to be capital cities, a tradition that is part of the country's history since the colonial period and through the empire from 1822 on, exemplified by many cities today, state capitals. As we can see in João Pessoa at Paraíba State from 1585, in São Luís Maranhão from 1612, in Recife or the Estado Mauritius in Pernambuco State from 1637 with Dutch colonization, in Teresina, Piauí from 1852, and in Aracaju, Sergipe from 1855. With the proclamation of the Republic in November 5th, 1889, a new nation came into being. With a federal structure based not only long, any longer by province, but by states. And the practice of erecting cities will be kept as instrument rulers and entrepreneurs would employ to take possession of a vast territory still to be occupied from east to west, from the coast to the hinterland. In this point, we can assume that new city as defined by the architect Irving Galante 
is a planet and consciously create community as a clear response to state goals. Such urban creation presupposes the existence of an authority or organization powerful enough to secure to the site, primary resource for its development, and to exercise continuous control until the city reaches a viable size. In modern times, the symbology of power in the urban fabric of new cities is put in practice through two possibilities. One based on the foundation of countless cities aimed at the occupation of the territory, demonstrating dominion over it. The other direct to the creation of new capitals, administrative red quarters of a region or a country. The new cities include new capitals, are the equivalent of the special vision of the projects of the states and the projects of a society. In addition to reflect the ideologies of the moment, they reveal the protagonists of the project, usually monarchs and the heads of state, organized local communities, groups or individuals carrying out utopia, utopia or for necessity. From utopias, to realities, the new cities concur with Portuguese scholar and politician Antonio Maria de Souza Sardinha, for whom tradition, tradition is not confined to the past, but is something that remains in development and continuity. A mechanism applied with a view to achieve certain wishes, requirements, needs. A means engaged to attain a specific purpose, seats designed to be seats of power. But what is a capital city? Regard to Sir Peter Hall, in his paper, Seven Types of Capital Cities, we can focus on the political, political capitals created as seats of uh, government and provincial, provincial capitals, a special case in federal nations. In this sense, Nadib Umaz and others said that new cities projects are nothing more than a mark of the action of power and collective since antiquity, translate men's desires to manufacture their city themselves in the manner of their ideals and goals of their desires and needs. Michel Safier agrees that the new cities are personifications of power in a normal attempt to publish an ideological manifesto made by of asphalt, concrete, and glass. For Patrick Boucheron, the new cities are nothing more than foundation cities, and this foundation is by definition a political gesture. In response to political intents, social aims, and symbolic prerequisites, five cities were planned to become capitals in modern Brazil, Belo Horizonte, Goiânia, Boa Vista, Brasilia, and Palmas. First of them is Belo Horizonte from 1893. Until that moment, the old capital was Ouro Preto, an important city from the Golden Age in Brazil during the 18th century, with a very colonial architecture established on the hills of Minas Gerais state. With the Republic Proclamation in 1889, politicians from Minas Gerais state intend to break up this relation with the past and create a new future for that part of, that part of Brazil. In this direction, it was necessary to transfer the capital for a new site, far from the colonial landscape and next to a new economic source, the iron mines. For that, the engineer Arão Reis had been called to design the new capital. Here we have, you can see the master plan of Belo Horizonte, the new capital of Minas Gerais, which had been elaborated to show order and progress, influenced by Augusto Conte theories. Two orthogonal grids were superposed at 45 degrees, containing three different zones, a urban central area, a suburban area, and a rural area as a green belt surround the new city. As you know, making new capitals is a heavy operation, infrastructure, logistics, capital involved, etc., which demands from the state and its competent body a work of planning, execution, and monitoring. For Pierre Bloch du Rafou, the state will be responsible for establishing a legislative framework which provides for funding and approve the plan, define the designers, include private, private operators, and offer the title of municipality to the new 
newly opened settlement. <clears throat> Here we can, uh, we have some pictures of Belo Horizonte, boulevards and perspective views, points, a seat conceived for 30,000 inhabitants with the prospect to reach 200,000. Nowadays, Belo Horizonte is a metropolis with two million and a half inhabitants. Our second case study is Goiânia from 1933. As the example of Minas Gerais state, something similar occurred in Goiás state. The new oligarchy of Goiás wants to replace the old oligarchy by creating a new capital, very different from the old colonial city of Goiás, the old capital. Also, this action was related to, to the political proposal from the president of the period, Getulio Vargas, in his march to the West, with which he intended to defend the country borders, promote the colonization of inhabited regions, and expand their agricultural activities. Located closely to the South economic frontiers, the new capital was designed by the architect and urbanist Atilio Correa Lima, with a very baroque design, including a monumental civic center. After 1937, Correa Lima broke up his contract with the company that built Goiânia, the Coimbra Bueno Company, left space for the engineer Amanda Augusto de Godoy, finished the plan, especially the south sector, a residential zone planned as neighborhood units. Here are some images of Goiânia considered for 50,000 inhabitants. Today, Goiânia also is a metropolis with 1 million and a half thousand inhabitants. Our third case is Boa Vista from 1944 in Roraima State. Between 1937 and 1945, Getúlio Vargas was the president of Brazil in a dictator regime. As we saw that he intends to occupy the west of Brazil, also he had interest in occupying and colonize the north borders, the Amazon forest, by creating new territories and states. One of the one of them was the territory of Rio Branco, actual Roraima state. After its delimitation, the new governor contracts the engineer Darcy de Renusson to redrawing the small town of Boa Vista, an existing village with only 300 inhabitants. Here, a view over the old village in the Rio Branco River. As a result, we have this large plan proposed by de Renusson and his team. About the plan, Danielson explained. <clears throat> Starting from a generated center, search of lands of the north of our territory, radiating the energy of its people as to protect it, Horema, North Guardian. Remember, at the time it was designed, the plan for the city of Boa Vista, we were at the end of the Second World War. At the long before that, not a few grid eyes invading our borders with exploitative missions and variety of devices to take hold and occupy our lands. More than a simple radio, harder than a simple array, it would be the Brazilian soul present with the body and the heart to ensure the integrity of our limits. Therefore, the radio system is the symbol of our territory unit, social language, and ideas of the Brazilian people in the far north. The idea of convert, converting the streets to the center, which is established power in the state, was intended to draw everyone's attention to existence of an, another. A plan elaborate for 5,000 inhabitants nowadays, Boa Vista, our northern, northern capital, has uh, 320,000 inhabitants. Our fourth, fourth case is Brasilia. Following this intention to occupy the hinterland, we have the most important case, the transfer of federal capital from Rio de Janeiro to the Central Plateau in 1957. Rio de Janeiro was Brazil's capital during colonial, imperial, and republic periods until 1960, when the power staff was transferred to Brasilia from the coast to the hinterland. An action made by the President Juscelino Kubitschek and realized by the architect Lucio Costa, who won the public competition for the pilot plan. I suppose that everyone knows uh, this plan better than others, so I 
can quickly pass through it. Also, you should know it's architectural design by Oskar Niemeyer and staff, just to highlight that Costa and Niemeyer had a huge team work together in a construction of Brasilia, which was conceived for 500,000 inhabitants just in the pilot plan, Almost most of its population lives on satellite town around the mother city. Today, the federal district has, uh, has around 3 million inhabitants. Finally, our last new capital is Palmas from 1988. Here, we have two maps to show the new configuration of uh, our federative units after the federal constitution from 1988. One of the new federative unit was Tocantins State, territory separated from Goiás in the middle of our country. The new governor of this new state chose a site located near the Brazilian Belém Road and crossed by Tocantins River. The last new capital city built in Brazil was designed by Grupo Quatro, our, an office composed by four architects from Goiânia who had Brasilia as an example plan to follow. The main features are the super blocks, the interesting and sustainable plan with different zones and five implementation phase. And for the first one, we have the civic center design. Here you have some Palmas images from the civic center and its public buildings and the artificial lake view. Palmas in the end, of its five phase expect to receive 1 million inhabitants. Today, our youngest capital has just 270,000 inhabitants. So here we have our five new capital cities planned from the last century, that is on to Goiânia, Boa Vista, Brasilia, and Palmas. Concluding, they are cities that have important figure in their original origin usually engaged politicians and counting their conceptions and materialization with a range of professionals, holders of consistent views according to the solutions involved at different moments. Seats settled on strategically select sites and draw, a, draw according to current theories and paradigms throughout the 20th century. Seats founded on precise date and with prompt development compared with most spontaneous towns. They are symbols not only of power and innovation, but strategic means of territorial occupation and population attraction. They are not only as an aesthetic representation of an age, but the tangible attainment of the ideal city. Insert, inserted in a secular panorama, their creation, their development, and their continuity made these examples a tradition, a tradition marked by political, political cultural ruptures or redirections in the occupation of new frontiers. While Belo Horizonte and Goiânia, just like the process initiated by Trezina and Aracaju in the period, in prior period, sought to break with the shackles of the past, assuming the posts of the former colonial capitals and try to enter in the political economic map of the country. In turn, Boa Vista, Brazil, and Palmas followed the movement of modernization and occupation of the Brazilian hinterlands in a perspective that brings them closer to the first colonial administrative headquarters, whose purpose of territorial occupation were decisive. Ruptures and directions per pertinent to the tradition that continues to develop a tradition to be continued with the possibility of create, creating 20 new states according to some projects in progress in the National Congress. For finish, the creation of new capitals can be framed in a regional plan, regional, regional plan policy, occurs occasionally in the figure of administration new cities, a symbol of power and order in a region, as in Minas Gerais, in Goiás, in Roraima, in the Indian states of Punjab, Haryana, in Tocantins, or in a nation, as exemplified in the new capitals of the United States of America, Australia, India, Pakistan, Brazil, Nigeria, Ivory Coast, or Kazakhstan. Regardless of the scale of coverage, 
Such cities became a representation of a uniform vision of the space occupation principles, reflecting in their tissue and architecture the power established over them. Our reference, and thank you. <laughs>